Welcome back. Now, suspended presidential spokesperson and member of the ANC's Provincial Executive Committee in Gauteng, Kusela Diko, has filed an appeal with the party's National Disciplinary Committee to challenge the outcomes of a disciplinary process in which the ANC in Gauteng province found her guilty of bringing the party into disrepute after she failed to disclose her late husband's business interests. In a separate development, the ANC Interim Provincial Committee in the Northwest province has temporarily suspended the membership of former Premier and ANC Chairperson uh, Supra Mahumapilu amid allegations of instructing members to go against a decision of the interim structure. And in news related to the party's former president, uh, Jacob Zuma's upcoming corruption trial, uh, lawyers who went, uh, uh, who were rather set to represent him have since filed a formal notice of withdrawal in the Peter Maritzburg High Court. So to help us unpack all of these developments, we are joined by Professor Barry Hanyane from the Department of Public Management and Governance at the Northwest University. Professor, thanks for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sakina. Good morning to your viewers. So some way people may ask, uh, if the presidency on their part are still investigating Diko's case, why did the ANC decide to go ahead and suspend her anyway? And how do these two processes influence one another? And I say that and I ask that, bearing in mind that we always complain about the separation of party and state. And this offers a clear opportunity to delve into that matter. Sakina, I, I've always had a problem when, when the SG introduced that letter instructing provincial secretaries to actually compile a list. And I asked myself, where is the template that will assist uh, those party officials? And secondly, is there capacity, and especially from a legal point of view, although within an intra-party uh, platform, to actually allow these provincial secretaries to undertake that all-important task. But then we should be surprised that we find ourselves in this quagmire. Because from the onset, one would appreciate that the, the integrity commission of the party should be the one that says, look, here's a template. This is how we're going to level the playing field for everybody. And this is how we're going to ensure the element of, of, of fairness so that in the end you don't have a situation like, like, like a Diego's case where she says, look, uh, given the impasse that is there, I'm going to lodge an appeal against this. I think my own party erred on the part of, of including me into that list, especially when, as you say, uh, the matter is still under investigation. But then it's the very same same provincial secretary's office that says, look, extend your, your, your leave uh, in the presidency. And yet, on the other hand, uh, uh, she's included in the list. So there is a little bit of contradiction in terms right there. So on a point of clarity, and what is your take, uh, Professor, on the argument that Diko actually did not violate any of the ANC rules um, uh, yeah. when it comes to members having to declare their spouse's business interest with government? Um, is the ANC not being inconsistent in the application of their own rules once again? And with regard to bringing the party into disrepute, well, isn't that opening a can of worms? We seem to have... Uh... Very long time. Oh. The, the, the ANC has somewhat been very lax uh, when it comes to issues of discipline within the party, let alone the management of discipline thereof. So, so here, here is a situation that says the, the SG's office could have been in a worst position to handle this issue. As I said earlier on, it would have been much more ideal that a, a structure within the party is given room to manage this process so that in the end, you don't find the contradictions that we see today, you don't find the inconsistencies that we note um, as, as cases happen. It was, it was, it was of course, the Gauteng uh, Provincial Secretary, together with the Mpumalanga uh, Provincial Secretary, who raised this issue to say, 
there are some lines that, that are not clearly defined at the blurred. And worst case scenario, the mandate itself uh, seemed not to have been conceived well. And, and they needed clarity. So it's interesting to see whether that clarity was forthcoming. And in the end, it allowed the process as dictated by the SG's office to run smoothly. I think uh, the ANC has made a mess out of the whole thing. And, and it may very well backfire in the end. Uh, so, looking at one of the other protagonists in the DECO case, uh, of course, the former Gauteng Health MEC, Bandile Masuku. Uh, now, on Monday, he said that he would take um, uh, the ANC Gauteng um, disciplinary outcomes on appeal to the national body. But um, Gauteng ANC committee um, yesterday made it very clear that there is no appeal allowed uh, but to comply and to step aside. So, once again... That step-aside issue and uh, the inconsistent application, seemingly, of that rule. Uh, what do you make of this? And, and how does the ANC actually find a way forward uh, that is somehow acceptable for all parties involved? Sakina, so, my, my, my understanding is that for quite a while, the, the ANC has somewhat taken a, a soft position when it comes to the implementation of critical resolutions that are taken in conferences. This issue of step aside, for instance, is no exception, despite the numerous attempts by the NEC to try and rectify it in this instance, 2020 in August. But again, it ends there. It, it, it then further shows that from an administrative point of view, perhaps the party is faced with serious challenges challenges of rebuilding, challenges of, of modernizing per se, and making sure that its own precepts guide the process of managing uh, party processes. So this step aside, it's, it's in a way exposing uh, all those challenges. And I think uh, it's going to once again create more confusion. And let's not forget, uh, you, you have a, a free state province that, as, as things stands now, the, the, the leadership there has, has somewhat, uh, from a legal point of view, being asked to step, step aside, seeing that the election thereof was pretty much unlawful. So in the end, unfortunately, this resolution seemed to be uh, the opening up of a can of worms for the, for, the, for the governing party. And I suspect that more problems are likely to come forth. Now, uh, let's just move to um, your province, to the Northwest for a moment. Um, former Northwest Premier and uh, obviously former uh, PEC chairperson uh, in that province, Supra Mahuma Pelo. Now, he's been suspended by the Interim Provincial Committee in the province and will now face a disciplinary process for misconduct. And we are told that this relates to uh, influencing a member of the party to defy the ANC step-aside policy. Now, he's also accused of factionalism by, uh, uh, and uh, is said to have run a parallel event during the campaigns uh, for elections, for by-elections in uh, some of the municipalities. So what's actually happening in the province? And again, if you take someone um, who uh, for the longest time was the most powerful ANC cadre in the northwest province, uh, what does all of this mean? Well, Sakina, in relation to the province where I am, look, uh, factionalism in this province is deep-rooted. You all know that. And, and if you have to take cue from what was once said by the ANC's think tank, uh, Mr. Um, I just can't remember his name. But, but, but uh, the situation here in this, in, in this province tells us that, look, fashionalism is deep-rooted, the pushback from the, the Ram Mahoma Bilu scam uh, is, is somewhat uh, heightened by the fact that they would want to reclaim power, as it were. Then, of course, you have the PIC that has been seen to be a, a bit weak and, and, and it's being challenged as we speak. In a way, 
again, the, the sitting premier, uh, Professor uh, John Mukhoro, uh, I think his position is somewhat vulnerable, being seen as somebody who is not necessarily bringing with him a, a, a political following, a political constituency, and of course, we know him as a seasoned administrator. So perhaps one would read from the Mahoma Pilu camp that here is, is a chance for them to push back, to reclaim what used to be their own power base. And, and that's no wonder why uh, they had that parallel um, a rally uh, against the one that was organized by the party in the province. But then, of course, he goes on further to tell our very own mayor here in Purchase Road, J.B. Marks, to say, look, if you are, you are asked to step aside, I don't think it's a wise decision to necessarily abide by that, which in itself uh, it's, it's, could be interpreted as uh, undue influence within, within the party, especially in the province. And, and I wonder why he's facing the wrath of the PIC uh, to have his membership temporarily suspended. Mm. Uh, so, speaking of the PEC and suspensions, uh, you mentioned prof uh, the Premier Professor uh, Job Mohoro. Uh, where does that matter stand right now? Because they wanted to suspend him. Is he suspended? What, what happened there? I think, I think that issue is in a limbo currently. And let's not forget that he's not alone. There's an additional five members who, who were charged by, by, by the PIC. So we'll have to wait and see exactly uh, what, what that issue is all about. The, the, the issue to be observed there as well is that the PIC went to, to sort of like issue the statement without having contacted the principals themselves, including the premier. So it is worrying to say, is, is, is the PIC in the province really serious about managing affairs in a manner that once again is politically fair and of course rational and just to all in some. And um, just before we go, uh, Professor, the former president's legal team, of course, uh, cutting ties with him. So uh, talk to us about your initial uh, sentiments around what is happening there, given that it is uh, just a few weeks before that trial involving Thales is about to get underway. Well, let's, let's, let's note that the, the Mabuza team did not necessarily give uh, public reasons why the decision to withdraw uh, became the necessary one. But one can note that, that the former president has always had trouble with those that represent him. In case of Nkandla, much the same. Uh, in the end, troubled relationship with with. Mr. Hewley, and, and here we are with a judgment from the Supreme Court of Appeal saying to him, look, uh, in, in the first instance, the High Court in Gauteng was correct in not allowing the state to pay for his legal fees. And these legal woes from a financial point of view may very well be seen perhaps as a motivation to say um, uh, Mabuza and company, and by extension, uh, advocates Kakani, uh, are likely to withdraw, seeing that uh, uh, money might not come through in terms of paying for their services. There could be other, other underlying factors, but for me, at this moment, without being too speculative, those may very well be um, uh, the driving factors. Well, Professor Hanyane, thanks so much for your time this morning, helping us to unpack and understand some of these latest uh, political uh, developments. Professor Barry Hanyane is from the Department of Public Management and Governance at the Porchestrum campus, campus at the Northwest University.